Local support for today's News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. I'm Katrina Altman from St. John's Elementary. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Joe Weary. Long before the days of matchbox cars and electric trains, children around the world have been entertained with wooden toys of all kinds. In our first segment, the sixth graders of St. John's visit a man who has used his wooden woodworking school skills to carry on the tradition art of making wooden toys. News 6 reporter Brian Pullman tells us more. As back in the days of Pinocchio, wooden toys have been enjoyed for centuries. I'm Brian Pullman, and my grandpa makes wooden toys for today's generation. Grandpa, how did you get started with woodworking? Well, I guess I always did like to build things, like barns and corn cribs and hog pens and houses. And when I decided to semi-retire from farming, I thought this would make a real good hobby for me to work with. And it just keeps growing, I guess. What kind of things do you make? Oh, I make all kind of trucks and pool toys and tractors and even some TV stands and bookshelves and so on. Which one was the most challenging to make? Well, I think this train here was maybe the most challenging thing. That's when I needed my compound miter saw to make this cut in both directions at the same time. What do you like most about wood working? Oh, I just enjoy working with wood and, and it takes up all your spare time and more sometimes. Do you use a pattern when you, you make the toys? Yes, I always work by pattern. If somebody would give me the blueprint, I guess I could make most anything they want. Thank you, Grandpa. You have carved your way into many hearts. This is Brian Pullman reporting. Today's News 6 is produced by St. John's Elementary, located in Delphus, Ohio. The city of Delphus is 24 kilometers northwest of Lima, just off State Route 30. Delphus is situated at the intersection of two counties. Half is located in Allen County, and the other half is located in Van Wert County. Our city was founded in 1851 and has a population of 7,100. They say, in performing magic, the hand must be quicker than the eye, and that's certainly true in our next story. News 6 was lucky enough to spend an entertaining hour watching amazing magic tricks such as silver balls, dancing, and even floating sixth graders. News 6 reporter Adam Arts has the details. It is said every child loves magic. I am here with Paul Crandall, a professional magician. Paul, how did you get started with magic? Um, I started probably around 1989, and it was the summer of my fourth grade year, and I decided to go to the library one day and start picking some books up on magic. Um, and what that did is that developed from homemade magic tricks into bot or store tricks, and I kept collecting those until I became a professional magician. Do you have a favorite trick? Um, yeah, uh, the, my favorite trick is what they call the zombie ball. And what that is is a uh, silver ball that you have a flard or a large silk and float it with that. Is it difficult to perform magic? Yes, in the magician's point of view it is because you have to be able to work with the audience, they call it, or make sure that you don't lose your audience by boring them or things like that. So, uh, and then with the practice you have to put in magic, you have to put in a probably two hours a day just to learn the sleight of hand that is inquired in magic. Thanks, Paul. This is Adam Martz reporting. For my next trick, I'll disappear. 
we'd like to thank Paul Craner for taking the time to show us some of his magic tricks. In this week's Kid View segment, the sixth graders at St. John's Elementary talked about their plans for the future. Here's what they had to say. Hi, my name is Melissa Gideon with this week's Kids View question, which is, what do you see yourself doing 20 years from now? 20 years from now, I hope to be a famous musician. 20 years from now, I hope to be a famous basketball player. In 20 years from now, I plan to be a famous dancer. Across western Ohio, from the Ohio River to Lake Erie, runs a shallow ditch that used to be one of the most important waterways in that part of the state. It was called the Miami and Erie Canal and was a source of income and power in the 19th century. History has left little of this once magnificent canal, but the city of Delphus has found a way to keep the stories of these waterways alive. News 6 reporter Joe Messner has a story. Delphus began as a canal community, and today there are people trying to preserve this heritage. Lou Holman is one of these people. Why was the Marguerite II built? Marguerite II was built to recall the heritage that Delphus was founded upon. It was done by a group of uh, young people and very uh, appreciative of what they have started. How was the boat built? The boat was built by uh, local volunteers. The whole community pitched in, donated the lumber and the supplies that needed to build this. What were the canal boats used for? There were four types of boats. The one was a passenger packet, which the Marguerite II was modeled after. There was the uh, freighter, which hauled freight up and down the canal. And then there was the uh, service boats, the state boats that maintained the canal. And then it was a combination of a passenger and a freighter. Thank you, Mr. Holman. Now let's cast off for a trip back into history as we send you back to the studio. This week in Critic Cor Critics Corner, St. John's Elementary chose Birds of Terabithia, written by Katherine Patterson. It is a story about making friends and losing them. Leslie Burke is a, new school, is, is a new girl in school who forms a friendship with a boy named Jess. Jess and Leslie create Terabithia, a, magic kingdom, a magical kingdom in the woods. Many days after school, they would go to their secret hideout just to talk and laugh. Then one morning, a, ter a terrible tragedy occurs. Only when Jess is able to come to grip, grips with his tragedy does he, find, does he finally understand the strength and courage Leslie has to give him. Bridge to Terabithia is an excellent book you will never forget. That's all for this week's show. Be sure to tune in next week when the 6th grader class from Antwerp Local visits News 6. Local support for today's News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.